burnt at the stake. One time, a firecracker went off in my hand, and it felt like I burned it off, but it wasn't even that bad. And another time, I accidentally hot glued my fingers, but my mom bought me ice cream, so I got over that pretty quick. But I remember the first time they set me on fire, when my best friend and I had the word faggot thrown at us like a lit match. I remember the first time he told me he liked boys. We were in my basement cutting our doll's hair. I told him it was okay. So did I. I remember writing songs in my bedroom because he could sing. He had hips that were made to move, and a song always popped in his throat. My words didn't mean a thing until they left his lips. I remember wishing desperately that my mom wouldn't make me wear a skirt to church and having him sneak them over to his house for midnight dances alone in his basement. She would lose her mind trying to figure out where they'd all gone. But I knew they were better off with him. He's always been prettier than me. He's always been more graceful. I remember being okay with that. I remember the first time he cried on the bus, when they tried to spit on him, when he was braver than me, silent tears dripping down his face, smearing his mascara like ash, while I sat watching through the closet door as they laughed and judged and fanned the flames, begging. I remember coming out. I remember holding her hand and feeling so proud because after the last few years of kissing any boy I could in order to find myself, I had never felt more at home than in our, in our interlocked fingers. But then I remember the liquid, the light, I remember the lighter fluid they poured down my back as they dripped into places I didn't want them, like when they said they could make me straight or that I should at least give them a show like my sexuality was only accepted if they got something from it. I remember when he threatened to kick all of their butts because even in high heels and a cocktail dress, he could still throw a punch. <laughs> Sophomore year. No one cared when I cut my hair, wore boy clothes, and asked to be called Andy. But when he put on that dress and wig, he cut and brushed and made absolutely stunning. They hid behind computer screens and asked him to set himself on fire because being feminine is a death sentence. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words and flames engulf me faggot. We don't talk as much anymore. But when we do, he tells me he likes drinking more than singing, and he has always had a throat like a lightning bolt. He tells me he wouldn't mind dying, not that he is suicidal or anything, just that he thinks it might be better. We are tired of burning. We are tired of scorch marks and voices so mutilated we are unrecognizable when we tell you who we are. So instead, be afraid because we are coming for you. When you light a fairy on fire, it will come after you with dark magic and rage. And guess what? It's on fire. So be prepared for burnt down cities and rainbows poured out like gasoline over this city. We are coming for you. How funny it must feel to fall on the wrong side of history.